Hello, everyone. Welcome to our weekly discussion series that's hosted by the Chaldean Cultural Center in collaboration with the University of Michigan Detroit Center, Unique Voices in Films, and CMN TV. Today, our guest is Lamar Bobby. He's a Chaldean American actor. Hi, welcome, Lamar. Hi, how are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm busy, and so are you these days, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very. I'm involved in several projects, and, uh, I know, and I know you have your sister's wedding today, so thank you for making the time to come on yeah. and share your um, <laughs> information about your career as an actor. Thank um, you, yeah, it's exciting. So born, you were born in San Diego, California, and raised in mm -hmm. Detroit, Michigan. Um, so yeah. what... Uh, how how much of time have you spent in Michigan versus San Diego? I know you've gone back and forth. Um, so yeah, I was born in San Diego. I have a big family, um, six of us, six kids, and um, half of us were born in Michigan. And then we moved to we moved to San Diego. My family moved to San Diego, and uh, myself and my younger sisters, who are twins, uh, were were born in San Diego. We lived there until um what about 93 or something and um so i was about seven eight years old seven years old and then grew up in west bloomfield and spent uh the next 20 years there and um then i moved to uh la um pursue an acting career out there so the majority of my life has been in uh in michigan with in west bloomfield and um yeah i love it here so um, did you feel, you moving to LA, did you feel it was necessary as an actor to move there to find um, jobs and roles? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Whether it was uh, New York or LA, um, I had already gotten my uh, SAG card in Detroit. I uh, did a lot of uh, independent films, short films, commercials, um, you know, print work, whatever it might have been, I, I think it kind of just hit the limit of what, you know, the Detroit market would have to offer me or what I would learn as an artist and from the business of it and all of those capacities. So um, it was important for me to uh, make that decision, um, even though it's not like uh, the most common thing in our culture to uh, to go move out and just go move on your own um, and, you know, make that jump because you have to see what life has to offer you with, with uh, if you're really serious about a career, right? Yeah. And, and how did you start? How was um, your interest in that career? When did it start? Um, so I grew up uh, like a big sports guy, um, still am and played basketball throughout high school throughout my whole life still do um and it's honestly it just happened happened by chance it was a pretty <laughs> interesting fun you know kind of story just i was uh going to uh, i was at brother rice i was playing basketball over there i was their neighboring schools with uh brother rice and marion uh, to the two schools one's an all-guy school one's an all-girl school and I had you been used to public school my whole life um and I ended up going to Brother Rice and someone was like hey there's this drama class that you can take at Marion I was like wait I can go to that class and you know, <laughs> that sounds I can see girls one hour a day okay I, I'm okay with that. Plus, it sounded like a really interesting, cool thing. I I, I love movies, like you know, to to my core. They they you know, I can get into why you know I became an actor and what really drew me to it. Um, you know, there's a lot of definitely wonderful reasons behind that, and I just love love movies, love this artistic storytelling and the lessons you can learn from it. And um, so I was like, oh, man, I've always loved acting and movies. Let me let me go try this. Plus, I get to go be around girls one hour a day. Thank God, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, so it was a really great experience. My uh, the teacher there, Mrs. Smella, was will, will always uh, stay in my heart. God rest her soul. She passed away many years ago. But um, in between my junior and senior year of high school, um, 
you know, I, I was a young kid and, um, you know, my basketball career, I had scholarship offers from colleges even after my junior year. Um, but if things didn't work out to play my senior year or I was going to be very challenging from a, a few different perspectives. And so the teacher that was the drama teacher uh, enjoyed me, enjoyed me having me in her class, uh, thought I was talented and asked me to just, you know, audition for the, you, you should audition for the plays. And I was like, listen, that's going to get in the way of basketball. So I had to make a decision and, you know, we all make decisions in our lives and kind of gave up basketball at that point and auditioned for these plays and got the leads in the high school plays, you know, the, the story, but um doesn't seem like a big deal now, but at the time I was like, it was pretty cool and uh, really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed this art of storytelling, uh, being on stage um, and, and just having the camaraderie as well of, uh, of a cast and crew, et cetera. Um, that led to me, um, you know, having to balance, you know, being Chaldean and having this entrepreneurial business mindset and also having this artistic part of myself. So when I got to college and, um, uh, I was majoring in finance. I also basically minored in theater and any chance I got, I took theater classes, auditioned for the plays at Wayne State and ended up doing a couple of plays um, for their, for their undergrad repertory, you know, theater or for their, for their theater program and um, went from there and just kept on, you know, auditioning, uh, getting roles, getting my SAG card and, all that. So it was, you know, it just happened by chance, you know? <laughs> so do you feel, uh, you, you mentioned that, you know, it is true that in our community, um, this is not something that's easily, that when we choose arts and culture uh, to focus on that, uh, sometimes there isn't really that support or it seems like so, so much of a hobby, then um, sometimes people don't take it too seriously. To me, that, yeah. What was that a challenge with regards to the community, how, how they viewed or family or anything like that? I've, all, I've always gotten a lot of love and support from my family. I think any kickback from my family or any family within our community is, it comes down to a couple of things. So for me, it's like, uh, it seems like, um, you know, our, our community, was, it's, I love it. It's, I love our community. And it wants, you know, its sons and daughters to, you know, be stable, to uh, make sure that they have something to, fall back on and our parents just want the best for us yeah it comes um, from a place they, of love like they everything they, worry, they don't want like in the future you know that we're like broke or something like that. yeah <laughs> yeah, want, yeah 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 they um, want to make sure that we have a nice future so it comes from a place of love but you know it all comes from the place yeah. of love and um so it's one of those things where as in, in our own lives we have to I realize, thank God, you know, I think I have a, I have a wonderfully supportive and beautiful family. So it's like, um, I realized even back then that, you know, it was like, okay, I just have to make this decision on my own. And, you know, they're going to support me because they love me and they're going to want the best for me. Well, but I mean, they have, when you look back on it, they have a point, you know, like you go there and, you know, it's not like this tight knit community that we have over here, you know, you're on your own. And, um, you know, you build, you start to build your own sort of community within the arts and within the city of, of great people. But um, it's not like that built in sub network, so to say, where it's like, you know, any, uh, any type of thing that you might need <laughs> is only like a couple of degrees of separation within our community, you know? Right. Um, so, you know, but I, it's beautiful. Uh, it's, you, I, I recommend anyone if you really have a passion for something, you know, go do it, you know, plan for it, be smart about it. Um, you know, you can still have a second career, in my opinion, if you do something that, you know, is, is allows for your time to be free. But, um, you know, if you want to be able to support and still pursue an artistic career. But um, that being said, you know, I have no regrets. I love I loved every moment being out there. Yeah, well, I like the attitude that you didn't use anybody to like hold you back and you haven't used anything to put a blame on. You just kind of are very realistic no, yeah. about the situation and committed. And then creating that balance is challenging. 
But really what I've been finding out over the years, like the more I get involved in my work, I just realize this is really just the way it works best from even people that have that that have regular acting roles and everything, they still have that second job. And it's usually like a, a company that they have or, you know, whatever they do, they they make it work or if it, even if they teach at a university or something like that. Um, yeah. So sometimes, it, and, I, and I think it creates, create stability within the person as an actor then you're or any creative person you're not kind of sitting there waiting you know um you're not waiting for something to come in order to like you you have income coming in and that kind of settles things down so um yeah and so uh interestingly though you came back to detroit <laughs> and yeah now when you're here um you have this role that we uh, i was introduced to you by father um andrew because mm -hmm. he knew i was working on a feature film and he said you know um, oh i know this I know props, props to father andrew what up father andrew? <laughs> <laughs> yes thank you thank you <laughs> um and he well he's great at connecting people so it's like it's no surprise because he's connected me to so many creative people and he really really appreciates the arts this is what he understands it like he understands i almost feel like even you know he's a priest but he understands the struggle and he understands what we're trying to do, even when he's not in it, you know. No, and pre priests or not, they're all everyone's people, and they all had just have you know their own unique look on life and, and yeah. abilities to give to their community and to their yes. flock and to the world. So. Yeah, there's like a certain thing that's you know their heart, each person, and there's a, a certain thing that they understand. Um, and in in his case, when he introduced me, um, you know, he, it, it was good that you had. I knew you were going back and forth, but when we uh, auditioned you, it was really perfect because it was the role fit, uh, the role of Matthew was so suitable for you. And, um, and then you had all the background acting from being in, you know, bigger things that going to LA and having that experience. So it, it shows when you are on the set and the way people take instructions. So, um, sometimes when you prepare yourself in life and do these things and kind of get involved and you even had to uh, you know you're, you're part of sag um it just shows that when the time when the opportunity comes it's easier for everybody involved and we could sense it myself and the casting um director um but i wanted to ask you um i know that when we approached you and you, and you read the script um what was it about it that made you feel like you know, this is something that you wanted to work on. Was it the character? Was it, was it the story? Was it the combination of the two? What was it that kind of, um, you know, brought you on? And, and also, I mean, you played the character so well when you were auditioning. How did you feel about the whole process? Um, I thought it was a wonderful story. Um, you know, obviously kudos to you on that. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a beautifully balanced story that isn't, you know, trying to, um that isn't trying to be super controversial or this or that it's just a it's a beautiful story about you know lives intertwining growth for growth for you know uh the main character um, and my character kind of you know uh, what drew me to him and was able to help me understand how to play him is that you know i i, I can be uh extroverted and you know this smile or you know, all that etc but at the end of the day um you know when you put me in front of like um you know the people i love the most or the times where you know you really i'm, I'm infatuated with someone um you know um some parts parts of those introverted parts of me comes out and, and it, i can relate to matthew in the sense of how you know when he's uh, just you know, really uh, intrigued by the and and kind of by by her and by the it, yeah the main character yeah so you're an, yeah. The neighbor, and you know um the thing like I felt like there was so much divine influence in this whole process because when we were casting we were just looking for good actors that was our thing right. that were the right for the character 
Uh, but what was beautiful about the whole process is that, uh, you know, there's a Chaldean uh, family that lives across a, a non-Chaldean family of a Muslim family. Yeah. And when we were casting, it just, the perfect actors happened to be representing yeah. the, the families that they were from. I thought that was so beautiful because really it's like, uh, you know, so you're acting, but really it's also part of who we are. You know, you're, you're presenting something that is part of our reality. And um, yeah. I just felt like it created more authenticity. Um, so in the, about the story overall, you know? So did you feel like a, playing a Chaldean and with a Chaldean family, what did that mean to you? And like, how has your, the Chaldean influence uh, been in your, uh, in your life as, a, um, as an actor, but just overall, like, how would you like it seen maybe, you know, even in, in films or portrayed in books or, you know what I mean? Like for me, I always kind of felt like we, we didn't have a part in the story, not even just, mm -hmm. as, you know, just even as, as Iraqis. And it was very important that I deliver authentic stories because there was so much stereotype. And aside from the stereotype, there was a need for our voices to be heard. Um, so that was why it's like, I was always pushing for those stories and writing those books. So for you, how did you feel about that being a Chaldean, seeing what the films out there are that were presented to you now being part of a, you know, a Chaldean American, Iraqi American film, all of these dynamics, how, how I know these are a lot of questions, but you know, what, <laughs> I know, you know, what the heart of what I'm asking is. Yeah. Right? So, um, for me, um, I think it's 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 fairly simple. Um, one, it's such a blessing to be able to you know play a, a Chaldean in in a movie that's representing Chaldeans. I mean, I I wouldn't have in my wildest dreams thought that I would have unless I made something myself. You know, <laughs> so um, you know, it's very very cool to be able to you know play a Chaldean and then draw just on my own, you know, influences and draw deep from there. And then being Chaldean in general, um, to touch on the second part, um, it's, I love it. I mean, I, I love our community. I love our culture. Um, I'm very, uh, faith, I know Chaldean is, you know, you, like in the movie, you have Mary statue right outside. It's, my faith is extremely important to me. You know, I served, I served in church for, at St. Thomas for like eight years as like the head server over there. Um, I was, you know, even when I was in LA, it was uh, important for me to make it to church every Sunday, you know, you know, rain, shine, uh, whether, you know, we're talking outside or inside our heart, you know, <laughs> uh, whatever's going on, it was always, uh, it's always been important. So, um, I mean, I love, uh, I love our community. I love, you know, being Chaldean. It's a, uh, it's a blessing, you know, whatever, all, all the good things, the bad things, it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, and it's influenced me in a lot of ways, you know, as an actor too, it's, um, you know, whether I was auditioning or living in LA, um, and doing projects over there, it's one of those things where, um, the roots and I, and I can only give credit to, uh, my family there, my parents, starting with them, and my brothers, my sisters, et cetera, my, my friends um, that have kind of held these roots in check. And whether I was 3,000 miles away or not, you know, you kind of, uh, what you see right now is, is, you know, the same Lamar that was, that was before I moved to LA. So it's one of those things where it has, uh, hasn't changed in that, in that capacity, you know? Like they keep so. you grounded, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So given that you have gone to LA and given your interest in acting and your appreciation for storytelling, why it would storytelling would be important? I know that, um, you know, uh, sometimes this is an area that's not as understood or appreciated as much, or the, the power of storytelling is not really understood or valued enough. Um, how yeah. do you feel that storytelling would enhance um, not just with regards to, I mean, we, we know how it's, it has many, many communities. Um, right. People from different back, different communities have used storytelling 
to really let others, the world, know who they are. How do you how do you feel, or what would you like to say with regards to how our community can enhance or utilize? Maybe that's a better word to utilize storytelling in order, you know, to preserve and um, to share our stories with the world. Yeah, um, I mean, <clears throat> I moved back to I moved back to Detroit, West Bloomfield, uh, from living in LA, but and you know to kind of go towards uh, building uh, stability and other aspects, aspects of my life and, you know, maybe uh, find someone and get married and all that stuff. But at the same time, um, you know, what was, what I was building out there was part of what you're saying. I mean, uh, I've been working avidly on two different TV projects for, um, you know, one of them is actually a Chaldean based story uh, that's written by a, a good friend of mine who is also an extremely talented writer named Bernard Jaddu. And he's also Chaldean as well. Cool story on how we even met, but um, he's an extremely talented writer, um, won the Nichols Award recently for uh, as a writer. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, he won it for it. I need to have him on here one day then too. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and we, you know, we wrote he wrote a cool uh, TV story, a TV show that uh, kind of in, encapsulates, um, you know, um, the story that isn't, you know, pushing Chaldean down anyone's throat because I don't believe that's the best way to have a. Yeah. um a story about any culture told you know you want to have it told in a fun way like you know you have um the rocks new show you know it's it, who 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 much knows about his culture but it's introducing it in like a cool comedy family way and that's kind of one of the one of the influences you know we kind of have over here is uh you know it's without like talking about the story too much it kind of you know encapsulates family encapsulates being Chaldean encapsulates, you know, moving away and living and acting and having a family and, you know, um, all these different things that, um, that, you know, the Chaldean part of it, you know, puts such a unique spin on it that the world, you know, I'm sure it would be gravitate to, even though we're a small community. And when the story is done right, it's a, it's a really beautiful thing. And even the other TV project that I, that I have, that I've been developing as well is um, is a TV project about in, in based in the video game world, and you know um, whether I whether the character is Chaldean or not in that, you know, which we which you might be, um, you know, just stamping you know our name even from an executive producer standpoint or, or acting in it, and then whether the character is that or not, it's anything that we can do to kind of um, create, create things that, you know, tell a great story, um, you know, it, I think it enhances our culture and enhances, because we have a beautiful culture. We have, we have people in the arts, we have people in every aspect of life. And, um, you know, we're a very extremely hardworking community. And, you know, if, I think if uh, all of our, you know, all my, my parents and all of the uh chaldean immigrants uh would have would have uh you know immigrated to la <laughs> then there would have been a lot of us in the film community already you know but uh because it, based on how hard uh, based on how hard we all work and uh and the way uh, the way kind of we're we're hardwired <laughs> so um you know uh who knows what will happen with my project but for me it's all you realize when you're in uh when you're building an acting career, um, that the only way to tell these authentic stories and to have something that's really going to be true to you is to do something yourself. Uh, you know, you can't count on someone else to kind of say, Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah I think Chaldeans are really cool, but I don't know who the heck they are because they're only based in Detroit and San Diego and I I've never heard of them, but <laughs> Hey, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, because 95% of people like me have never even heard of what, what a Chaldean is. So, which is kind of cool. I love that about LA. I mean, I, I got to meet the most, it was the most diverse place I ever lived and uh, I'll ever probably ever live. And uh, that to me is a blessing. You know, you get to meet people from all walks of life and 
you see people that have great hearts and, and are just good people through and through, no matter what they are, what they believe or what they do. So, um, you know, and introducing and then to tie it all in, introducing that in, in a story as, as a Chaldean and if it's a, playing a Chaldean or a Chaldean based story can only enhance, you know, um, what that outlook is on who we are you know, because we're a multifaceted culture with, you know, layers as well. The, yes, exactly. There's like diversity within the, the diversity, within the diversity, you know, so there's, um, totally. I, I liked what you said with regards to um, having us in the arts and culture doesn't necessarily mean that we're kind of just like, it's all about the Chaldean side, but it's not like that. Like, it's just being able to be authentic and truthful about the stories um, and, you know, rather than having others describe us, or in our case, like a lot of people don't even know that we exist. So it kind of just, right. like, <laughs> well, we do exist and we do have a lot of creativity and we have abundance of stories. And most of our stories are not focused on anything being Chaldean. It's a, just focused on love, family, faith, and whatever other communities intermingle with that. And, um, you know, we're very, um, I think because we so believe in community as well that we embrace uh, the people around us like I do anyways and, I, and and most of the people that I deal with they're just they're about community and they like to take care of each other we, we grew up kind of tribal in that way I know tribal sometimes doesn't have there's only a certain um, image of it but tribal really just means taking care of whoever is near you and whoever you can just to make sure that everybody is taking well care of and everybody's safe right yeah so but um so i'm very happy um that we have people like yourself and like your friend who like i said i would love to have on the show as well and, and hear about his story and his journey because you're opening the way and you're becoming examples and the the chaldeans or iraqis or middle easterners or anybody from any background that they feel that they don't have a space um i think your example is what you're saying is like you pursued what you wanted you found a way to balance it out. Um, you kept going and then you are opening doors. You, you keep going at it. You're opening doors for um, voices that need to be heard. You know, right. whether it's as an actor using a different somebody else's story or either as a storyteller yourself. So thank you for committing to that, you know, really. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, thank you for committing to that. And um, so any last words that you want to share with our audience? We just have like a few minutes left. And um, is there anything in, in the future that you're working on or you, you, your hand is, you know, your hands are pretty full right now, it seems like, but any last words that you want to share before we go? Uh, no, I was, I was already talked about the couple projects that I have kind of working on, but um, um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, what you're doing is great right here to, you know, put a light on artistic voices in the community is really wonderful. Um, and then, you know, I guess it, to me, it, the most important thing I can kind of say is um, when it when it comes to um, a lot of artists that I meet within our community is, hey, pursue it. You know, don't uh, don't fret, don't 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 get down just because you know our parents didn't come from a, you know, our parents are artistic, you know, they just, they just weren't doing, you know, theater and or ballet or this or that growing up in Telkef, you know, <laughs> so, you know, it's like, it, it, but, you know, I realized how artistic my mom is and how artistic my dad is and how much he loved movies and us watching John Wayne movies together, you know, and always just, you know, so, um, it's one of those things where it's, it's it's important, you know, if you do have an artistic mindset in whatever capacity, not to judge, um, you know, our parents for saying, hey, this is, um, well, what are you, what are you doing this? What are you, what are you thinking about this for? No, it, it's just something where, you know, they care about us. And, you know, if you really do want something in the artistic field, then um, plan for it. You know, don't, don't just think, hey, I have to go be a struggling actor in New York or LA you can, you can, you know, have some sort of security and still pursue a life of, you know, art and, and 
and do it, you know, and wherever you need to. Um, so if anyone ever needs any advice or anything, I don't have much to offer, um, but I have my experiences and, that's, you know, more than happy to help out in any capacity I can. That's really beautiful advice because those are the things that hold us back is, you know, blaming our parents or feeling like, you know, frustrated and letting that stop us. But that, that's wonderful. No, we can't judge them about anything. You know, our parents are, the, at least I can only speak for They're people too, and they have their own them, experiences. So. Yeah, and they, they're familiar with what they're familiar. And as yeah. a parent myself, I can say, I'm probably like messing up in so many ways and, you know, that I don't know. Really. <laughs> so. Not at all, not at all. We're all just doing our best, yeah. right? We're all doing our best. So thank you so much, Lamar, and um, thank, thank you, you for joining us today and have a wonderful time at your sister's uh, wedding. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. Yep. God okay. bless them. God bless their wedding. God bless them all. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.